Hello everybody. Today we're gonna do a fun topic. It's gonna to be turbo inline six versus V8s. I have the perfect person to talk you through this and everything because he has had wild, wild, wild setups of all those engines. It's Nick Novak. He drove in Lone Star Drift and got his Formula D license with us many years ago. Moved on to Formula D and has been doing fantastic in Formula D. He's won some big money comps and stuff lately. And I just think he's the perfect person to talk about a topic because he has so much experience in it. Let me show you the car real quick and then we'll talk to Nick. So this E46 came out to Lone Star Drift and was a crazy competition car. It was an S54 turbo. It made like 600 plus wheel horsepower. It was always on the most sticky tires. We had to change the rule book to only allow 300 treadwear tires because this car was so aggressive. And it has now developed into an LS3 car with nitrous. But this was a no expense spared doomsday pro-am car that was crazy. It had a team of people that operated it because it was difficult to operate. It was an absolute monster of a car. And I think a lot of people drove in program just so they could compete against Nick because it was so much aggression and excitement. And like when you want to go to a comp, you want other amazing drivers and cars there. So why don't you first talk me through the S54 and the, the actually, no, just answer it real quick. Which is better? The V8. Okay, let's get there though. How was the S54? You ran it for years. Why did you choose the S54 Turbo? If you don't know what that is, it's a big inline six, 3.2 liter, high revving, like the ultimate inline six yeah, from BMW or anybody. E46 M3, ITBs, all, all that fancy stuff. Okay, so. It was, it was great when it worked, but there were a ton of hiccups. Cause especially when you take such a high wound NA engine and you put a turbo on it you're bound to have some sort of issues. And there are so many different issues that you don't even think about that we had. And, you know, ultimately when we got into pro in FD, uh, you know, we decided to go the V8 route because they work, they're simple and they're easy to work on. Just to be clear, guys, this is not the V8 he chose to take to FD. He chose like a 1200, 1400 wheel supercharged V8. But we're just talking generalities right now. So what were the problems with that S54? Because it looked like you went to, was it Technica Motorsports? You went to the best shop possible to build that engine. You know, like you did not spare any expense. It was a built S54. It wasn't just like some junkyard long block. What blew up? What were the problems? Why couldn't like a high-end shop keep that thing going? Or could they? So the biggest issues were when we had the non-built engines and running in the Texas heat, they would, you know, see 260 coolant temp and it would just get piston failure, start blowing, uh, blowing oil past the rings and, you know, blowing valve cover gaskets out and stuff like that. And then another big issue we had was fuel knock. So, you know, we temporarily solved that issue by going to, you know, X85. So it's a consistent race fuel. And then, you know, after that, uh, the last S54 that was in this car, it ended up blowing at a gambler event up at E-Town. And we think it was vacuum re reference related, but we can't be sure. And it ended up completely windowing the block all the way around. So, so how many engines did you go through in that setup total? I think five. Mm -hmm. But dang. But. Those are really two, expensive motors. Two of them th were the same block, so we were able to recover the block, I think, two or three times. Mm -hmm. But we needed to swap the head a couple times, and then, yeah, the, the built engine's actually out back, the blown up one. So did you prefer that engine for power band and for excitement and all these other things? Because <coughs> it seems like the V8 has reliability knocked compared to, well, you shouldn't say knocked, but over that setup, was the driving more exciting? It was... I don't know about more exciting. It was more fun. It made all the right noises and, you know, having to drive it aggressive was fun, but the V8, just the simple, the simplicity of it and the, the always having the power, always having the torque is just so much, it makes it easier. Like it's almost mm -hmm. a cheat code. Yeah. And tell us about your big pro car engine. So it's a 441 cubic inch all aftermarket parts based i guess it'd be an ls7 based engine uh with a four and a half liter supercharger on it it makes between 900 and 1300 horsepower depending on the pulley size mm -hmm. and that thing 
makes all of the power. <laughs> Would you even consider doing an inline six to replace that engine? If the financial aspects were right, like, but I mean, it, it works and I don't see going away from that platform anytime soon. So the V8's better for you? Yeah. And your practice car now is also V8, which is this car. So what is this? Tell us about it. This is the, the old Lone Star Griff uh, 2019 championship car. Uh, it's a LS3. Now it's just a the crate LS3, just the the bottom of the line one, no fancy stuff. We just threw a Texas speed cam in it and it made 460 horsepower without the nitrous, uh, 560 torque with, or 560 horsepower with it, 600 torque. And it's just got a, a fast intake, a hundred shot and front mount radiator. No fancy rear mount stuff on this car anymore. It used to be dual radiator setup when we were in the S54 actually. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just rips. <laughs> when I saw you come out to Lone Star Drift events where it were like local level events, you had a team of people to keep that S54 together. Do you need a team of people to keep this thing together? No, not at all. I can go out to any event and you know not have to worry about anything except changing tires. Okay, and what makes the, you know, you've been around two JZs and you know, JZ engines and stuff a lot. What makes the S54 so much less reliable than a Jay-Z engine? I think it's a combination of things. I think because there's so much more tightly wound NA from the factory, you know, factory, they're 11 and a half to one compression. They rev to 8,000 RPM from the factory. And then taking such a, a high output NA engine and trying to boost it, you're, you know, it's, it's a lot more complex. And then you've got variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust side, and just trying to dial in everything. It's kind of hard to do. Yeah, and Michael Essa and Dimitri had good luck with their engines, their, their S54s. Why yeah. do you think, what do you think the difference is? They've, I think they just have more experience with building them and working on them. And just, I don't know how to explain, like, I think just the the experience with them is mm -hmm. is easier than they have they had like vac motorsports backing them with some of their stuff and some other big bmw brands mm -hmm. so i think i think just them working on them for so long and having a bit more expertise on them mm -hmm. just made them better for them cool but well it's super exciting to see you in this car doing so well i heard you won 25 grand in this thing not in this one no uh, i got third at the the other riverside event in this one uh the jersey one i actually took the pro car out to ah. since it was the weekend after so you're beating FD. on people on a second gear track with a thousand horsepower <laughs> car that's ridiculous most people were actually in either the pro car or the pro spec car at mm -hmm. that event since it was right after fd so so it was like it murder was, fest yeah everyone was was gunning for it and had their stuff crypt up to the moon, all the power, just everyone was trying to be fast. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything else to say about this setup? Uh, it, it's fantastic. Uh, I kind of wish I did it earlier, but you know, you live and you learn. Yeah. <laughs> do you think you would have been more competitive in Lone Star Drift with this engine over the S54? I don't know about more competitive. I know I would have gotten a lot more seat time because I actually would restrict how much practice I would take because of not wanting to risk any reliability issues. Yeah, so, I understand that. Yeah, and then I probably would have gone through way more tires. <laughs> yeah, what do you rev this thing to? Uh, this one's only to 7,200. Or no, sorry, this one's only seven. The Pro seven? Car is 72. Does it have a dry sump or accu no, sump or anything? No, Nothing. just a wet sump. Just LS3. Very cool. Holly accessories, Holly pan. Well, there you go. Uh, this is not a Jay-Z versus V8 comparison. It's more of an S54 versus V8 comparison, but Nick took the S54 about as far as you can take it, 650 wheel or something. Was that how much it was? Yeah, uh, when it blew, it was making, I think, 678. Okay, so almost 700 wheel um, versus his, he has another V8 that's obviously 1300 horsepower. <laughs> which is insane. And then this thing, uh, he has a lot of experience with both and he prefers V8s. Ah. Tur turbo noises are great, but the, v the V8s just work. Yeah. Turbos are fun though.
I kind of miss having a turbo car though. Would you have done as well in Formula D with the turbo car? Do you think that S54, if you would have stuck with it? Or would you have quit? I think I could have done as well, but I would have had way more reliability issues, I think. Yeah. Like, just because cool. just of the complexity of it all. Well, so. thank you so much for taking the time. Just a little fun video because you probably don't often, as people on YouTube, get to experience 1300 horsepower V8s and crazy S54s. And whenever I think about an S54 turbo engine, I kind of think about like, that's as good as you can possibly build an inline six turbo. Uh, just absolutely ridiculous stuff. So it's so cool to talk to people that have experienced it all.